Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lainey, thank you so much for stopping by. In today's video, we're gonna be doing my current favorites video. So if you wanna see the beauty products that I've been loving lately, then just keep on watching. Before we do that though, please remember to hit that subscribe button so you never miss another video from me. All right guys, I went full yellow today, yellow earrings. I got some, oops, wrong side. Yellow on my shirt, yellow eyeshadow. I even tried yellow blush. I don't have a yellow blush, but what I used was, I used from my AHA Honey palette from ColourPop, I used Totally Buggin, because it's more of like a goldeny yellow. I don't, even my nail polish is yellow. I'm just in a yellow mood today. What do you think about the yellow blush? I don't, I don't know if I like it or not. <laughs> I can't tell, I think I'm a little more on the cool tone side. I can get away with like neutral foundations, but I think the warm tone, the yellow or orangey blushes just don't look natural on me, so. I don't know, let me know what you think down below. Also, earrings are from Shop KK, if you are curious. Shirt is from Witch Baby Soap, and this is from the AHA Honey palette, as well as a cake liner from Glam Vice. So, yes. Let's just hop into my favorites. This is what I've been loving over the past few months. I try to do these seasonally, so I did one for my winter favorites. These are more of like my springtime favorites. So, Let's hop into the eyeshadow. So I have two kind of brands that I've really been loving. The first is Glam Shop. So I just pick, uh, I have some single shadows and another palette I depotted from them. This is their green palette. The, I think W in Polish means in. Um, so I think it's like the in green palette. Um, and this is what she looks like. She is so beautiful and sparkly. It doesn't want to focus. It's so beautiful. So you've got four mattes and a bunch of shimmers. I don't know if any of these are the turbo glows, but these are really, really nice and sparkly. The only shade I don't like is this dark green down here. It can be a little bit patchy, but I can make it work. And I love this neon green. Um, and I also love my turbo glows. Um, I didn't pull out my turbo glows. I just wanted to highlight this palette. Um, but I love all of my shades from Glam Shop. I really love this palette. I have another order on the way. It was supposed to be delivered on Friday, but apparently it was delivery attempted. Couldn't get into the building, so I deal with that a lot with my post office. So that'll be coming soon, but I really love my shadows from Glam Shop. Uh, the mattes are so nice, aside from this like green one that I said I didn't like, but the mattes I've tried from them are so beautiful. The shimmers are so stunning. Um, I reorganized my single, so my Glam Shop shades are like, I try to organize my shadows by color instead of brand, and I don't like it, but I haven't switched it back yet, so I don't like, I didn't pull out all my singles, but the green palette is so good. I really highly recommend Glam Shop, um, and I think for international shipping, it's pretty fair. It does take a while. You can upgrade to a faster shipping with them, um, but depending on how many items you get, it's either nine dollars or fourteen dollars i believe it's something like that so whenever i've ordered i've tried to straddle the line <laughs> a little bit and not go above the eight or nine dollar shipping charge um and i've been really happy with my purchase so far i can't wait to get the ones i ordered in the mail i ordered some of their marble shadows and yeah i really highly recommend glam not glam place glam shop if you are looking for some really beautiful sparkly shadows and you want to try an international indie brand you know, 2020 was the year of me really diving into indie brands. 2021 is apparently the year of me diving into international indie brands because the other ones I have to mention are from Lethal Cosmetics. So I bought both of these whenever they were having sales. I forget what one of the sales was. I don't remember. And then I did their Easter sale. <laughs> so I have two custom palettes. Um, the only thing is that the palette I picked, I don't like the, the white because it's already getting dirty, but this is the initial palette I built. Um, I have heard that Lethal's mattes are where they really shine. Um, I did pick up two shimmers in this palette. I really like them. I like the purple one more because it's more of a duochrome. This is more of a straight up shimmer. They're not my favorite sh uh, indie shimmer formula, but they are nice, I think. Um, but the mattes are really where it shined. I really wanted more purple mattes, and so I decided to go with Lethal, and I have not been disappointed. These are really, really beautiful mattes. Um, I love the variety. I feel like um, Lethal has really interesting undertones in their matte selection. Um, so as you can see, I went for more of the kind of minty green, the purples, and then I have like a pop of blue and a 
pop of like a springy green. Um, I really love this palette a lot. Um, I wasn't necessarily going for like cohesion, although it definitely does work together. I just wanted to get some like interesting undertones that were missing from my collection. Um, I really love how it turned out and I love my purchase. So when they were doing the Easter sale where you could play basically it was like Candy Crush and get a 35% off discount, I spent the whole day doing it and then I was like, well, I'm going to purchase it. This one is less cohesive of a palette. Um, I got two purples that um, I was missing and then the shade, I think this is Lucid, I just thought was so pretty. This one's more of like a ready purple, but I really like it. And then I got some of the more interesting green tones and yellowy orange tones. Um, there are a few more shades I would really like from Lethal, but I probably won't buy from them for a while. I like to buy from Lethal. I know I've only purchased from them twice, but I like to purchase from them when they're doing sales because it kind of offsets the more expensive shipping price. I, I am so impressed with the Lethal mattes. They're like literally all I want to use for mattes. They're so good. So I highly recommend Lethal if you haven't tried them out. I did want to try some of their gel liners, but I don't know how often I would use it. I do want to try some of their complexion products as well, but the shades I wanted to try were sold out when I purchased from them the last time. So holding off on those, but I'm really happy with these mattes and the shimmers too. I think uh, their shimmers might be a little underrated. I feel like everyone's like, oh, their mattes are so good. Their shimmers are just okay. But honestly, their shimmers are pretty nice, especially the duochromatic ones. I've become a cream blush monster. <laughs> So yes, I really, really, really love these cream blushes. So I picked up Coral Crush, which is just a really bright, hello oh, Scooter. This is just a really bright, like corally pink blush. And then I picked up Nude Kiss, which is kind of a brownie pink, I would say. They're both really, really pretty. And it's really easy to control the pigmentation level on these um, and they go on so beautifully um, I typically use like this elf small stipple brush or I should have prepared this ahead of time or I use their putty blush brush which I really really love this brush it needs to be cleaned all my brushes need to be cleaned story of my life but these are a really nice um, I think they're like $7.99 or $8.99 um, they're a really nice formula and I think, I, I feel like I've started to see more people talk about these. These aren't new, but they're really nice. I kind of want more, but I'm not because I'm being good. <laughs> but yeah, these are really beautiful blushes and I'm really, really happy with them. The other cream blushes I've been loving are these ones from Tower 28. Now these don't look used because they're not. Um, story behind this is I received in a Sephora order like this little sampler pack of Tower 28 blushes and then after I got that and tried them out and I was like oh my god I'm gonna buy these at the Sephora sale uh, the brand actually was donating 100% of sales to I forget what organization but I was like well why wait for a sale just you know buy these and have the money go to a good cause so I bought two of them I'm not going to swatch these ones, but I'll show you from the little sampler packet. I bought Magic Hour, which is this one. And then I bought Power Hour, which is this one. I really like Golden Hour as well, but I think it's a little close to one of my Rare Beauty blushes, so I didn't end up buying it. But let me swatch these, and I'll just swatch Golden Hour as well. Okay, so awkward swatches, but we've got Golden Hour, Power Hour, and we have Magic Hour. So Magic Hour is kind of like a rosy color, a cool tone rosy color. Power Hour is kind of like a deeper version of the Nude Kiss from Milani. Um, and I find these to be really easy to blend out. You can really control the pigmentation level. And then Golden Hour is more of like a or like a an orange, but more um I don't know. I like this orange blush on me. Um, it's more of like a peachy coral orange, if that makes sense. These are really nice. You can really control the pigmentation level. Uh, you can make them as pigmented or not as you'd like. Um, I like to build up my cream blushes because I do like to set with powder. 
Um, so w that's what I like about these is I can make them a little more pigmented and then when I put powder on top, they really tone down. So yeah, I am really loving these cream blushes. I'm an absolute cream blush fiend. It's a miracle I didn't buy Golden Hour during the Sephora sale. I'll be honest. <laughs> But I feel like I have enough cream blush right now and I feel like it's, I haven't actually compared them, I should, but I feel like it's a little similar to my Joy Cream Blush or Liquid Blush from Rare Beauty. So yeah, I held off. I was strong. Um, these little sampler packs um, hold a lot of product. I actually got one again with my Tower 28 order, but I gave it to my mom. I should see if she likes them. You can always th use these on the lips as well, but I don't like doing that. The next thing I've been really, really loving lately is mixing in glowy products into my foundation or using them as a base. So I have two right here. One of these is in my Project Pan. This is the Wander Beauty Catch the Light Highlighter and Glotion in the shade Celestial. So it has a like a stick highlight on the end. I don't use that, but I use this to mix in with my foundation. I love just the glow it gives me and I feel like if I pair it with the right foundation it doesn't make me too oily that's like my concern because I do get a little oily on the nose and so I don't want it to break down too soon and I do really like this product um and then the other one I just got during the Sephora sale I got the Charlotte Tilbury whenever I say Charlotte Tilbury I want to see it like I always want to say it like Teresa is dead um <laughs> The Hollywood Flawless Filter for a Superstar Youth Glow. I got the mini during the sale because I didn't know how I would like it. I got it in Too Fair. I probably, I didn't know if this was going to be too dark. It doesn't seem to be too dark on me. I also forgot that Charlotte Tilbury is kind of in the gray area of cruelty free. But I used this yesterday and I really, really like it. Um, it provides a nice glow. The only thing is I found it didn't really spread well on my skin. I don't know if it was the primer I used under it. I'm not sure, but I'm going to keep testing this out. Um, so this is not a favorite yet, but the method is what I really like. I, I'm looking, this is almost out, so I'm kind of looking for an alternative. And I know this is similar to the Auric Glow Lust. And so I wanted to see if I like this enough to try the Auric Glow Lust. So that's why I bought this. Um... But yeah, I am definitely looking for another one once this is finished, and I probably won't end up rebuying this. So if you have any recommendations, let me know. So another item I've been really loving lately are the lip glosses that are kind of like a lip balm. Some of them are marketed as gloss balms, other other others aren't. So the two that are kind of marketed as gloss balms are the Catrice Powerful 5 Liquid Lip Balm. I bought this during a uh, Ulta Perks Day. It was like 40% off. I really, really like this. This is in the shade Golden Ginger. It really just gives a light tint to the lips. The only thing I don't like is I wish it had a smell to it. It's kind of like it doesn't smell. It just smells like the ingredients, I guess. And I don't really like it. It's a little her herbally. Um, but I really, really like this. This is really a nice moisturizing but glossy balm. And then I also have, this one's marketed more as like a lip treatment, is the uh, Lisa Eldridge Gloss Embrace in the shade Muse. Obviously, very different price points. This is also a lot more opaque, um, but this is so comfortable on the lips. It definitely feels like a lip balm. And then the two that aren't really marketed as gloss balms, but are very much so, I have the Musée Beauty Lip Glaze in the shade Cezanne. I really wish they were coming out with more of these in their Rococo collection, but they're not. <laughs> and then this is the other thing I bought during the Sephora sale. I only bought two things. Um, this is the Tower 28 Milky Lip Jelly in the shade Cashew. So this is kind of like a tinted rosy brown. I had the mini set of the, the main lip jellies, the non-milky versions, um, and I flew through those. I knew I wanted to get another one of these, so I definitely took advantage of the Sephora sale and bought one. Um, I love this lip gloss so much. I love all of these kind of glossy balms. And I have been just flying through lip gloss so much this year, so I'll definitely get my use out of these. And I really highly recommend the lip glossy balm trend. I know there's a ton out there. They're really trendy. Um, and I've just been really loving them lately. Next up, I have two highlights I want to talk about. So the first one is the Musée Beauty Color Sheen in Airy and Ambient. This is, I'm currently panning this. Um, 
uh, on a usage goal, but I'm still panning it. These are really nice cream highlights. I really like them, and I like that there's kind of two colors. There is the more white gold and the more champagne. I hate the packaging, though. I did do a full brand review on Muse Beauty. There's some unblended swatches on top of the blush. Um, they're just so creamy and natural looking. So when I want a natural highlight that's not blinding, I go for the Muse Beauty color sheen. It just really is just a nice sheen on your face and they're really nice. And then the Lunar Beauty, what is this? Moon Prism Powder in the shade Mercury. I have been wanting this for like a whole year. Um, and I had the, like I signed up for restock notifications literally over a year ago. And then one day I checked my email and it said it was in stock and I picked it up and the reviews for this where you hear about how amazing of a highlight it is is so true. It's such a nice pale gold highlight um, and the packaging is stunning. I have loved everything I've ever tried from Lunar Beauty. Um, I bought this and the one of their glosses which I actually should have included in like the glossy balm category let me grab that yeah the lunar beauty uh, dreamy lip gloss is very nice as well um, I forgot to mention that but the moon prism powder is such a beautiful highlight um, definitely worth the hype um, I would love to see them come out with more like interesting highlights like duochromatic ones like like the ABH Moonchild Glow Kit, but in this formula, I would love that. So I just love Lunar Beauty. I can't wait to see what else they put out this year. And this is a fantastic highlight. Okay, we're getting down to the end. The next thing I've been loving lately is colorful eyeliners to put in the waterline. I don't have a lot, but it is something that I used to not really care for. And now I want a lot of colorful liners. I am looking at the LA Girl ones, um, but I haven't purchased them yet. So I have two right here from ColourPop. Not my favorite formula. These are from the Raw Beauty Christie collection. I have Marigold, which is, I don't know if you can see, but it's on my waterline today. And then I have the shade Spare Time, I believe. Yeah, Spare Time. And then I have these two from NYX. This is the Epic Wear Liner Stick. Um, I have the shade Periwinkle Pop and the shade blue trip i really like blue trip but periwinkle pop doesn't really show up in my waterline it's a little too metallic i didn't realize it was metallic when i bought it so i don't love this one but blue trip is that what it was yeah blue trip i really really like so i do like these um i'm probably gonna try the la girl liners if you have any other liner recommendations let me know but the la girl ones are so cheap and i feel like ulta always has like buy one get one or something like that so yeah i've been really loving colorful liner for the waterline i should specify okay we have two more makeup items and then two hair items actually so first up we have the sigma eye primer base i have the shade ignite this is what i was looking for in an eye primer i love the milani one but i wanted a little little bit more coverage for my lid um so i tried the elf one the putty primer that one is just really really dry and i don't really love that i have to stick my finger in it um and so I ended up buying this, I think, at the end of 2020. Um, and this is exactly what I want. It's what I'm wearing today as eye primer. It's just, it's a little bit darker than my skin tone, but once it's blended out, it works. It's just a good primer that provides a lot of coverage, and it's exactly what I need. So if you are interested, Sigma always has sales. Like, I would never buy Sigma brushes or their makeup without some sort of sale whether they mark these down to like ten dollars or if they have 30 40 percent off you can always just sign up for their emails and they have a sale at some point so um i highly recommend this primer it's really good i've used a lot of it we'll see how long it lasts me i have let's see how much i have left i have a decent amount left i feel like this is going to take me through probably the fall i feel like i'll have to buy another one at the end of the year but honestly it's worth it i love this primer highly recommend and then another thing i've been loving lately which of course i was not planning on filming this video so i should have worn more of the items but whatever i've been loving freckles i don't do them every day but i've been loving the faux freckle trend i have a lot of freckles on my body like my arms um and my legs 
but I have very faint freckles like right here and like right here so I do like to emphasize them with this and I found for me combining two different types of freckle products gives me the most natural look and these are also two different colors so first up we have the ColourPop freckle pen that came out last year which is much more of a cool toned one this is kind of drying out I wouldn't repurchase this but if you know of any freckle pens let me know so I'll do that and then I'll go in with the Kimchi Chic Afternoon in the Flower Field one, which is more like, I think this is like the Freck product where it's like on like a liquid liner brush. And as you can see, this one's a lot more warm. And so I think the combination of the two really gives the most, like the most realistic effect. My mom actually thought, oh my God, you're like freckles are popping out. And I was like, no, they're fake. <laughs> um... It does take a little bit of trial and error to find out the application method that works best for you, but now that I've done it a couple times, I found that I found a method that works best for me. Maybe I'll show it in a like get ready with me coming up soon. Um, but yeah, I've been really loving the combination of like a pen in the more brush tip faux freckle and combining them on my face. Okay, and then we have two hair items actually that I want to talk about. So the first one is the Derma E Scalp Relief Treatment. Uh, as you can see, I've used quite a bit of this. So I have a really dry, irritated scalp. Uh, and the last year, I actually had like a dermatitis outbreak on my scalp, according to my dermatologist. And I had like a medicated shampoo and like a little like, basically like this, but medicated that I would put on my head. Um, that was cleared up, but I found that using this has really helped keep it at bay. I went to my dermatologist in March and I had no problems. She said, you know, the changing of the seasons, like dermatitis can really like flare up and luckily mine's good. This really helps like my itchy scalp. And whenever I feel the need to like itch my scalp, I go ahead and apply this. It's basically just in this little dropper and you just kind of part your hair and squeeze it out on top and then kind of rub it throughout your scalp. And this has made such a huge difference. I do think it played a role in keeping the dermatitis at bay. And it feels really nice on the scalp. It's very cooling and just really, really nice. Um, Derma E is always like on sale at Ulta. Not always, but they always periodically have like buy one, get one, 40% off or whatever sales. Um, if you deal with a really irritated dry scalp, I think this will really help calm it. Um, or if you deal with dermatitis, on your scalp um this could help kind of keep it at bay i think um obviously i can't say that for sure but for me i don't know if it's a coincidence but it worked for me and then the last favorites was kind of a surprise uh it's the purology nanoworks gold shampoo and conditioner and i actually received these from influencer which i was shocked um they don't know who i am they don't even know i have a channel it's not even i couldn't even hook it up to influencer youtube wouldn't let me <laughs> um but i got an email that i was getting these and i freaking love them which is a disappointment because they're so expensive and i was testing it in different ways and unfortunately they work best together i tried using the shampoo with my regular conditioner and the conditioner with my regular shampoo and those were good but they really really shine together <laughs> um so these are for very very dry color treated hair i don't have color treated hair but i have really dry hair my last haircut was it was around thanksgiving 2019. i was about to get a haircut in march 2020 and then the pandemic hit and i have not gotten my haircut since i just wasn't comfortable with it um I know that a lot of people have been getting their hair cut during the pandemic and have been fine. Just something I didn't want to do um, until I got fully vaccinated, which I did get vaccinated on Friday, my second dose. Um, but Michigan is in such a bad outbreak right now. I'm probably going to hold off getting my hair cut anyway. These, like the ends of my hair were so just, are so, well they still are, so dry and damaged at the ends. I'll probably have to get like an inch or two cut off. And they just felt so dry and gross compared to like the top of my hair and honestly in one use <laughs> like it sounds like i'm being paid to say this but this like truly changed my hair my ends are not as dry as they used to be and using these together has repaired the ends 
so much and it lasts like I don't have to use these every day or even every other day so what I'm kind of doing is alternating between these and my regular shampoo and so I won't use these all the time because I want to make them last because they're expensive and I probably honestly won't buy both of them I'll probably just buy the conditioner um because I have like a shampoo that's more like to like keep like your irritated scalp at bay so I kind of alternate between that so I'll probably just go with the conditioner is this conditioner it doesn't really matter the conditioner and then my like scalp shampoo <laughs> but these made a huge difference in my hair they're really expensive though is it worth it I think for the state my hair is in now totally worth it I do always look for a good moisturizing conditioner just because I do tend to have drier hair when you have wavy or curly hair it tends to be drier so I do think it's worth it for me just for how my hair is um, but I think if you have really fine hair this is not gonna work for you I think it will weigh it down and I was looking at other reviews when I posted my review and I saw a lot of people saying the same thing that this is not really good if you have fine hair it kind of weighs it down um, but I really like these and I wanted to mention it because they were really good <laughs> All right, you guys, so that is everything I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know down below what what your current favorites are. I would love to hear them. Check them out. Um, and yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you like down below, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye! <laughs> the gang's all here. Oh, like sweets. Yes. You can only see his little butt. <laughs> fuzzy little butt. Scooter! fuzzy little butt. Hey, Scoots! He's like, um... <laughs> I'm camera shy. <laughs> Scooter! Aww. Look at the baby.